Thanks for coming to the reading and recording of um, The Sleeping Beauty. Um, this particular copy, uh, as you can see, is the Silhouette Theatre. Um, and I have said that this is by Lottie Reiniger, um, but that's kind of a misconception because this is actually a very special story and it's a little bit different than what we're normally used to, but um, I think you'll really enjoy this. So, a bit of backstory basically, Lottie Reiniger um, was born in 1899 and she is German, she's a filmmaker um, and she is one of the foremost pioneers for silhouette film. Um, she also is uh, basically the creator of uh, the multiplane camera which is, is used in animation and and stuff nowadays as well so she's very much like an amazing amazing woman um an absolute star of the 20th century you don't really hear much about her um she had an incredible career it's made over 40 films um the sleeping beauty is actually one of them so this is a book based on her silhouette film of um, the Sleeping Beauty, which was an animation that she created in the UK um, based on a series of uh, 10 minute short films that were all influenced by uh, like grim fairy tales and folklore and things like that. Um, she had, did make feature length movies as well, um, which were incredible. Uh, there's one, I think it was 1926, um, Prince Ahmed or some along those lines, I apologise for not knowing the exact name, but that was a feature length film and she's given an incredible amount of credit for, for that particular film. Um, so this one, back to this, what we'll do is I'll go through and I'll show you the pictures, but basically it's like a 3D theatre book showing her animation. Um, and if you actually go and check out the YouTube version of uh, this video once it's um, been posted there'll be a link to the original 10 minute movie by Lottie Reiniger um, which is a silent film but obviously there's no it's not one of her silent films there is an uh, there is a narrator and he talks you through the story and the silhouettes actually move in the movie which is amazing obviously they won't move too much here so it's a shame but I will show you um, up close as many of the pictures as possible. So let's get started. Um, it looks bigger than it is, but they're actually big pages because they hold the silhouettes. So I really hope you enjoy this copy of The Sleeping Beauty, A Silhouette Theatre by Lotte Reiniger. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Lotte at the, um, at the end of, of the reading as well. probably get a little bit of a preview of what's going on here. Once upon a time, in an enchanting castle, surrounded by woods, lived a king and queen who were filled with joy because a baby princess was born. She was so pretty that they decided to simply call her beauty. To celebrate, the king decided to hold a magnificent feast. The castle would be decorated Delicious food served, and Beauty would be dressed in sumptuous robes. All would be invited, including the 13 fairies of the kingdom. The Queen counted out the golden dishes for these honoured guests, but to her dismay, found there were only 12. One fairy would have to be left out. So I'll open it for the first one. So, let you get a good look. And if you look very closely on the corners, there's actually some stills of the other silhouettes as well. So we'll show them too. The next day, the King's page took the invitations to all the fairies except one. They were all delighted to hear of the princess's birth and said they would be pleased to come to the feast. But unbeknownst to the page, a 
a mischievous sprite flew to the 13th fairy who had not been invited and told her of the feast. The 13th fairy was a wicked fairy and was very angry. At the feast, the fairies gave all their best gifts to the little princess. Virtue, beauty, riches, and a voice for singing, lips for kissing, and feet for dancing. All that was good for the baby princess. And the little ones, yeah. But before the final fairy would bestow her gift, the wicked fairy magically appeared and with a cackling laugh said, this is my gift for the princess. Fifteen years she will live with your gifts, but on her sixteenth birthday she will prick her finger on a spindle and die. With this awful curse ringing in the royal chamber, the wicked fairy disappeared. All were heartbroken at the spell, but the rose fairy, who had not yet given her gift, used her power to alter the wicked fairy's curse. If the princess pricked her finger, she would not die, but instead fall asleep. She would only be awoken by a kiss after 100 years. The king, who was desperate to prevent the spell, he ordered all spindles in the kingdom to be destroyed. Throughout the land, people brought them out for the king's men to carry away. Years passed and all was well. Beauty grew into a fine young lady, blessed with all the virtues bestowed upon her. On her 16th birthday, while in the garden, Beauty came upon a high tower she had never seen before. Looking up, she saw an old woman beckoning to her. It was the wicked fairy, and she was spinning. The princess, of course, had never seen a spindle and asked if she could try it. Almost immediately, she pricked her finger. The spell was cast and she fell at once into a deep sleep. All around her, the rose fairy's magic began to work. The king and queen fell asleep. The servants fell asleep. And so too the knights in the courtyard. The soldiers at the gate fell asleep, in the kitchen the fire stopped blazing, the cook dropped his ladle. Soon every single person and animal inside the castle walls was soundly asleep. A thick wall of thorns sprung up around the palace. Outside the thorns, children were born, grew up and had children of their own, but the castle slept. One hundred years passed. 
One day, a young prince came into his land and saw the castle through the brambles. He wondered what it might be. An old shepherd told him of the legend of the sleeping kingdom and the beautiful young princess who had slept for a hundred years and the surrounding forest of thorns which no one had been able to get through. Oh, sorry, I'm very good at this. <laughs> prince spurred his horse forward, eager to see the legendary castle. At his approach, the thorns fell away as the ancient spell began to disappear. Riding through the gate, past the still sleeping soldiers, he entered the castle and discovered the entrance to a tall tower. The prince climbed the stairs until he was in a chamber at the top of the tallest tower. There, he found Princess Beauty, young and radiant, deep in her slumber. Knowing of the legend, he leaned forward and kissed her. Through true love's kiss, the princess awoke and fell immediately in love with the handsome prince. Slowly, the spell unwound from the castle. The thorns fell away and one by one, everyone woke. The court was filled with wonder at the strange thing that had befallen them. The king and queen were amazed and so grateful to the gallant prince who had awoken their beloved daughter from her sleep. In no time at all, the kingdom celebrated as the prince and beauty married, and they lived happily ever after. I hope that was a nice surprise for you to see a book that's a little bit different. I actually came across this while I was doing a wander around the bookstore um, looking for interesting, actually like visually and aesthetically interesting books and, and stumbled across this and I was just so delighted to come across its actual story and its backstory and its history um, because it's an incredible little accompaniment to the actual movie. Um, the movie goes into a little bit more depth actually and the animated silhouettes are incredible to watch as they move along the screen. Um, it should be noted that pretty much all of them were hand cut, um, hand designed um, by Lotte herself. It, it, it was very much her, her little thing and she worked with her team obviously. But the, the design is definitely all her. Um, there's something very kind of um, nostalgic and, and romantic about the style of the art and, and how it, it moves along. Um, and it can, <laughs> you can see similarities with other, um, other things that have been done with this story. Obviously the really famous one by the big famous studio, the Disney one. But um, there, there is an art that seems to come with this story and, and the music and everything that no matter who's producing it, the, the Sleeping Beauty story has this kind of aesthetic around it that everyone seems to really respect. Um, so I will add the link um, of the movie to the, the YouTube video um, and also on, on the comments for anyone who follows along with those comments in Facebook so that you can all see it. It's 10 minutes. It's 
could change your life it's absolutely amazing and please like watch more of, of Lotte Reiniger's work um again just all of it's incredible another kind of like I'll hold this up so you can see the book but um another kind of thing that's, that's worth noting about her is that um especially during like World War Two, a lot of German filmmakers were drafted in to, to make propaganda for the Nazi party and some obviously were involved but um, Lotte was against it but she early 30s uh, she left Germany because of the rise of the Nazi party and just kind of wandered around Europe for pretty much till about 1944 um, at which point she actually returned to Germany uh, because her mother was sick and at that point uh, she kind of got drafted in to help make propaganda for the Nazi party but it was right on the end and obviously like she didn't want to so when it's the first chance she got she ended up coming over and um, away from all that she worked in France she worked in England um, this particular film was made in England along with the other shorts as well she, incredible person not talked about enough you know female pioneer technology film creativity she's an absolute hero and, and definitely somebody that you should all listen to and i have spoken about her way too much but yes please <laughs> i really hope you enjoyed this version of sleeping beauty um definitely something to add to your library uh this particular one was actually found in waterstones so very much accessible um and thank you so much and we hope to see you at the next reading bye oh bye okay. bye